Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and today we're going to be building a micro motorized John Deere tractor. Late last December, my grandfather unfortunately passed away. He was an Illinois farmer, and among other things, he liked model trains, as I'm sure you can tell from his wall to wall display, and was also a lifelong fan and supporter of the John Deere company. So much so that when John Deere heard he passed, they sent a wind chime for his funeral. I thought that was pretty cool. I always enjoyed going to visit my grandparents on their farm and really liked seeing and riding on all my grandfather's different tractors. It was a real highlight of my young life as I'm sure you can see. But no matter how much I enjoyed spending time with them, I was always excited to get back home because thanks to them, I had my own John Deere tractor waiting for me there. And before you get a chance to ask, <laughs> yes, I do still have the tractor. It's not going anywhere. And so in today's video, in honor of my late grandfather, I thought it'd be super cool if we mixed his two interests of model trains and John Deere tractors and made a micro John Deere tractor. Now I'm well aware that tiny John Deere toy tractors already exist. However, I don't think I've ever seen a tiny motorized one. So let's see if we can change that. So to kick this thing off, I'm going to jump into my CAD software, AKA FreeCAD, and start designing what I want this tractor to look like. It took me like 20,000 hours to design this, and I didn't want you guys to have to sit through all that, so as you can see, I sped it up considerably. But as an unexpected side effect, I now stick and feel like Chuck Bartowski watching The Intersect for the first time. Anyway, I'm trying to design this tractor to look like a 4020 John Deere tractor from the early 70s. Of course, the version with the cab on it. I think those tractors look pretty stinking awesome and are also quite iconic. With the CAD files now done, I'll insert the sub-micro floppy disk of the future into the 3D printer and get to printing. Since the tractor is so small, I was able to print all of the files in about an hour's time, which really isn't too bad. And yes, I am printing them individually simply because I believe it increases print quality. And here are all of our parts after they've printed. As you can see, I print them in both yellow and green, which match the John Deere tractor scheme. <laughs> I think that just rhymes. <laughs> From the very beginning, I wanted to print these in the colors they're going to end up being in without having to paint them. But since I only had white and black film in at the moment, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. I mean, yes, I could have spent close to $40 and bought two brand new rolls of filament, but I really don't need that much filament and it just seemed like overkill. But lucky for me and 3D printers everywhere, I found a very inexpensive solution. Turns out there's these little toy 3D printer pins that use the same filament as 3D printers, only sell them in smaller boxes bundles. Instead of each roll weighing over 2 pounds like a traditional one does, these rolls only weigh 30 grams. And the best part is, the price reflects that. I was able to get 20 different colors for only 10 bucks. And each roll has enough filament in it to where it can print my tractor about 4 times over. Now I'm of course not saying that this is the best quality filament in the world, however I'm also not saying it's the worst. I'm actually really happy with it and it's super cool to have all the different colors. But I digress. Back to the tractor. As you can see, our tractor is comprised of 10 different 3D printed parts. We have the two halves of the main housing where all the electronics are going to be stored. The tractor's cab where the driver would sit and also doubles over as our battery holder. And then this is the top for our battery holder. Our front axle and axle pin. And then lastly, our four wheels. The two big ones for the back of the tractor and the two smaller ones for the front. But we are of course going to need a few non 3D printed parts as well. Like a power switch, I already tore the arms off this one so it fits in the housing better. A teeny tiny DC motor from an old servo. Three Lego wheels, two are one inch tall, the other is a half inch tall, but plot twist, it's split in two. A few button cell batteries. Some electrical wire, although not nearly that much. Some finger glue. A few paper clips. A spring from an old battery terminal. And a very thin brass strip. Oh yeah, and a few plastic gears. Links for everything down below. But now that we have all of our parts, let's begin. Build time. So to get started, I'm first going to take our motor and power switch and drop them into their places in the main housing. Just like that. I'm then going to take our wires and solder one to the lead of the motor and the other to the lead of the switch. Um. And solder the other lead of the motor to the second lead of the switch. Here we are, and as you can see, everything fits in there pretty well. 
Now here I have a little tiny worm gear and I guess now is probably the best time to slide it onto the motor shaft and super glue it in place. There we go. Now we can very carefully drop on the other half of the housing, pinch it together with some small clamps, then proceed to fuse it together with just a little bit of super glue across the seam. I am so happy. Sometimes when you use super glue, the material you glue turns white, depending on what kind of material it is. And as you can see, evidently PLA is not one of those materials, which is super nice. Now on to the battery housing, which is definitely going to be a little bit more tricky. What we're going to want to do is take a spring from an old battery terminal and a small piece of brass that I got from a brass strip at Lowe's and solder one to each of the wires, making sure that we first cut the wires to as short as we possibly can. And then we'll very carefully slide these pieces into the battery housing and then snap the battery housing in place with the tractor. Now with a lot of caution, we'll take some small pliers and push each piece into its cutout because each piece does have its own cutout. Then very carefully super glue it in place. Okay, cool. Everything is looking pretty good. However, there are two important things to note. First off, my spring is a little bit too long, so I'm going to cut it just a little bit shorter so that the battery can fit in there easier. And secondly, I know it's very difficult to control the flow of super glue, particularly at this small of a scale. So if you accidentally covered up the terminals and now the battery cannot make connection with the terminals, I would suggest just getting a micro file and filing it down a little bit. But regardless, congratulations. That is by far the hardest part of this whole entire build. So now we can go ahead and super glue it onto the rest of the tractor to make sure it never comes apart. And you know what? While we're working on the cab, I'm going to go ahead and mark her in these windows to make it more realistic. That looks pretty stinking cool. And I've been debating if I should tell you guys this or not, but I accidentally glued my cab on at a slight angle. It sticks up on this side and it's really driving me nuts. But oh well, onto the wheels. So for the rear wheels, I'm going to get a paper clip and our other plastic gear. I'm going to cut out the straight section of the paper clip to use as an axle. I'll then slide one end of the axle through the axle hole that's in the frame, slide on our plastic gear, and then push the axle through the other. Um. Now we'll just center the gear on the axle, then very carefully glue the axle and gear together. Perfect. And after that, we'll just pop the tires on the back wheels, and then you guessed it, glue the wheels onto the back axle. For the front wheels, it's basically the same deal. We'll just put a little bit of super glue down the hole, then drop on our axle and push the pin into the hole. Just like that. And as you can see, it can move around a little bit, which is intended. Now, just like we did on the back axle, we'll cut out a straight piece of the paper clip, slide it through the provided holes, push the tires onto the front wheels, and then super glue them to each side of the front axle. Perfect. And with that, we can now finally drop in our button cell battery, push on the battery cover, um. then flip the switch and give our little tractor a test. Um. sure you saw, although this keeps a pretty decent pace, it's by no means the fastest thing in the world, but that's actually by design. Real life tractors typically aren't that fast because they're built for torque and not speed. You want them to be able to pull trailers and not get stuck in the field or what have you. And so of course I didn't want this to be too fast because then it wouldn't be realistic, but you also want to be able to have nearly as much fun with it. I imagine you'll be using this most of the time on desks and tabletops, and so if it went too fast, you'd be spending all your time trying to stop it from driving off the edge instead of actually playing with it. But with all that being said, if you do want the tractor to go faster or maybe even slower to increase torque, all you'd have to do is swap out the gears for a different ratio. 
I got a big bag of gears for just a few bucks, and although they won't all fit in the tractor, a few of them will, and it's super fun to play around with. And so there you guys have it, my little micro 4020 John Deere tractor. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video, and if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.